as a, as a very brief intro for those of you who are not aware of the driving force that Jay is within the, uh, the LMU animation department, uh, it's, uh, it's really amazing to see that uh, I have been seeing Jay uh, for the last 10 years teaching here at LMU, uh, Advanced Storyboard, Intermediate Storyboard, and uh, create this sense of uh, uh, urgency within younger artists to understand cinematic language, to, to appreciate uh, uh, the, the, the power of storytelling. And when I just, uh, after seeing this, uh, and I, I, I'm pretty sure I, uh, you agree with me, it's, uh, it, it's a very powerful piece, and, and that has, uh, in a way, uh, convey what uh, Jace has been uh, telling the students during all those 10 years and creating this uh, sense of community of storytellers here at LMU. And it's really fascinating and really rewarding to see that after 10 years, after a decade of, of, uh, of the work of uh, Jay with, uh, with our students, uh, it has come to, to fruition in these terms. And, uh, and that is pretty exciting. And so my first question is, uh, conceptually speaking, what is the difference between the animation film and the live action film in your terms as a director? The things that, that Nolan did in his Dark Knight Rises, uh, which wasn't really a direct adaptation of the Dark Knight Returns. He took bits and pieces from different uh, graphic novels. He took from Dark Knight Returns. He took from a story from the No Man's Land and Nightfall, a lot of different stories, Batman stories, and kind of made that into the Dark Knight Rises. What I'm doing is not really a panel for panel. What I try to do is keep the iconic moments. Like I said, like the first time you read it, like I wanted to kind of call upon that. Like the first time that you, you read it and the, what you felt. And, and I try to keep the main moments from the, from the book. You know, we didn't really do a lot of voiceover work, which was in uh, the comic book. Because, you know, for me, I think the performance of Batman should be clear right off the bat. And if you want to know what he's thinking at a particular moment, you have the graphic novel. So I really wanted to make this as a, as a companion piece to the, the book. I was wondering, since you just came off of uh, Young Justice before you were working on this, how, how was it for you working with an elderly superhero? Was it difficult reeling yourself back in? Uh, that's actually a good question. You know, if, if, if you ever look at any of my um, the stuff that I'd done prior to this one, You'll notice that all my Batman fight sequences, I have him flipping and throwing exploding batarangs and being basically the ultimate ninja. When I worked on this, I had to be like, okay, wait, I can't do that because, you know, 70-year-old Bruce Wayne can't do that. So I had to make it so that, you know, well, he's a big guy, so I wanted to tailor make his fight fighting style to how big he was and also the fact that he's much older. So, you know, a lot of the decisions we made in terms of fight sequences is that I had to find uh, a fighting style that, that fit him as well as still was you know exciting and cinematic and it just didn't boil down to rock'em sock'em robots uh, which is just guys just punching each other. Uh, the fight sequences that I try to do is I call it man ballet because I want it to be like every move that the character does is telling a story. It's not just you know you know a move for for the sake of a fight move you know it starts off one way you 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 slow down the rhythm you break it up and then you build up to another crescendo and then you bring it back down and then you build up to the end and then you know you end the fight you know um, and so that's how I, I try to, to to think about when I when I choreograph my fight sequences what did you feel that you wanted to try and push the most in terms of storytelling in terms of style what were you kind of aiming like to really push in this film uh, I think the main thing was trying to kind of capture what, you know, uh, what as an audience member reading the comic book for the first time, what you envisioned your head, you know, like you w I try to capture that. I mean, of course, you know, it's up interpretation. I mean, I think the only time you'd get it 100% perfect is if like Frank Miller decided to animate it himself and, and do a whole feature length of adaptation of The Dark Knight Returns. So. I wanted to be, you know, of course, as true to the source material as I can, but also at the same time bring my own kind of, you know, flair to it, which was um, the, you know, fight choreography, a little bit more cinematic in the sense that, um, you know, I'm a big fan of like, you know, really cool shots and longer shots and just setting up mood and pacing, uh, and then make it feel like an '80s film. I mean, that's my thing. Like, I wanted to make it feel like you're in the 80s-ish and, uh, and have that kind of vibe with the music and you know the color palette is very reminiscent of Lynn Varley at the, but at the same time trying to create a story you know um, from beginning to end that was self-contained and you can enjoy you know by itself but still when you look at it part one and two appreciate it as a, as a whole. 
whole piece. Jay, thank you so much. Thank Thanks you for, for having me, guys. Thank you.